Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And the new MacBook Pro from Apple just got released. A new design, some new ports to the body, and of course, a new processor. And I went with the top of the line M1 Max chip. So that's a 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU. Excited to get some testing done and of course do some video editing on this machine. I also have the M1 MacBook Pro. I might actually do a quick rendering comparison, just throwing in some 4K video files later on in the video. And of course, compare it to the hardware as well with the new design and a look at the notch. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to think about that top notch where the webcam is. Anyways, a lot more Apple content coming soon. Be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified. I've got the new AirPods here, another video coming on that very soon. But anyways, we are going to unbox and set up the new MacBook Pro. Maybe run a quick benchmark and do some testing. Let's get started. Here is the new MacBook Pro from Apple. I went with the 14 inch model because the 16 inch model is just a little bit too big and heavy for me. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that this laptop is definitely heavier than my 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. Definitely has some weight to it, so I can't even imagine how much heavier the 16 inch model would be. This is hitting the limit of weight for me setting the laptop to the side for just a second. Let's see what else we get in the box getting started guide. Also, I don't know if I've ever seen black colored Apple stickers included before. Kind of cool that they're mixing up the color scheme. Uh, this is the space gray MacBook Pro, not the silver if you're wondering. And next up is our power brick, which might be a little bit larger than other ones depending on the specific model that you get. This is USB type C, has a foldable plug this is a 96 watt usb type c power outlet and finally we have our magsafe charging cable has a braided cable included usb type c and there is our magsafe 3 connector with a status light up towards the top of course with magnets uh, embedded in we'll test this out in just a second all right and on to what you came to see the new macbook pro from apple oh interesting it actually has MacBook Pro etched into the bottom. Is that etched? It is. Kind of cool, actually, that they have that. I mean, it's not like you're really going to see the bottom of it very often. But I just haven't seen that in the past models that I have. Anyways, uh, pretty standard design overall. There's the back and the front. As always, let's go ahead and do our one-handed opening test like I do in just about all my laptop videos. And it passed very easily. There was that Apple boot up sound. So it is booting up, but while it boots up, let's take a closer look at the hardware that's included. On the left side of the laptop, we have our MagSafe charging port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, a headphone jack. Let's also do a quick test of the MagSafe charger that comes with it. I don't have it plugged in. It's not actually going to charge it, but setting it near it, that was pretty strong, actually. It finds it and connects to it right away. It is very strong. I really wouldn't worry about it. If you do trip over it, it will disconnect, uh, but again, in a safe way, and will hopefully disconnect and not pull the laptop with you as much as possible, which is what makes the MagSafe charger so great, is that it is strong, but not strong enough to pull the laptop with you if you accidentally trip over it. And on the right side, an SD card slot. I'm so happy they brought it back. It was a big mistake getting rid of it in the first place. Another Thunderbolt 4 port and an HDMI slot there. All four corners at the bottom have these circular grips, some darker screws as well. Kind of gives it a neat look. Uh, there is that etching of MacBook Pro. And there is the other corner. For reference, here's a quick size comparison between the 13 inch uh, bottoms and the bottom of the 14 inch and with it opened up a cool accent with the black keyboard and the space gray color I do like how it looks on the left side here some speakers There is that keyboard speaker on the right and then a trackpad Which is a good size again at one of my favorite things about MacBooks is the trackpad and how responsive it is for a quick comparison you'll see that the whole background of the keyboard is black whereas on the previous model, it went with the same color, and there's just a bit of a color difference between the silver and the space gray. And what do you know up at the top? No more display, no more touch bar. Drop a comment, let me know if you're happy about that. I actually kind of like the touch bar. I thought it was kind of cool. I had some neat applications. I know a lot of people that didn't like it, however. And check it out, there is that 14 inch display with something very unique about it up towards the top. I will say the bezels are very minimal 
around the sides and top, but then of course you do have that notch up there. So just for a quick bezel comparison, that is what you get. So you get either thicker bezels on the previous model or thinner bezels with that notch. I'm gonna run through the setup process and talk about anything that's noteworthy. Now let's set up that fingerprint scanner in the upper right hand corner of the keyboard. I wanna make note that it is similar to the style of that on the iMac with it embedded into the power button here. It's a little bit different than the previous MacBook. Anyways, let's set up that fingerprint scanner, just placing a finger on down. It's interesting, one thing I really don't like that they didn't include, since there's that notch up there and all that space, they actually didn't include a face ID at all in this laptop. It might've been a nice little touch to have both as an option, but you only have the fingerprint scanner. The setup is now complete. This is Mac OS Monterey. Oh, interesting. <laughs> the notch up at the top, the cursor actually goes behind the notch and comes out on the other side there. Kind of funny, I was expecting it to kind of stop it and you'd have to go around. It makes sense, you have this bar up towards the top to interact with, but I just didn't expect that mouse to hide behind the notch. So if you're missing where the mouse cursor is, it might be up there. Anyways, going to about this Mac, here we go. Mac OS Monterey, MacBook Pro, Apple M1 Max chip. I did get 32 gigs of RAM. And then clicking over to storage, I did get the one terabyte model. It has 966 gigs out of the box. Um, again, I didn't transfer anything over. It might be downloading some contacts from my Google account, anything like that. So it's filling up a little bit, but expect to get over 966 gigs out of the box. So now that we're all set up and ready to go, I'll run a quick benchmark and also do a 4K rendering test. I need to download Final Cut Pro now. So after running a couple quick benchmarks on battery power, here are some of the results. Geekbench 5 score, 1784 single core, 12,644 multi-core score. And then in Cinebench R23, multi-core 12,355 and single core 1,526. You can compare those to yourself. Again, this is just out of the box on battery power. And very quickly before I get to the video rendering and final cut and compare it to the other MacBook I have, I wanna make mention that I'm already noticing the ProMotion display. Uh, you might not notice it on the camera, but the animations are definitely smoother because the refresh rate is higher. Let's double check that in system preferences, displays, and here we go. Uh, it's using XDR display 1600 nits and pro motion refresh rate. However, if maybe you want to save some battery or if you don't like pro motion for whatever reason, you have 60 hertz and below as an option. But with pro motion display, you can get up to 120 hertz which is fantastic, and I'm hoping more laptops start to increase the refresh rate on their displays. Anyways, I loaded some video files into Final Cut. It will be all in 4K at about 10 minutes and 45, 46 seconds. Here's just a quick scrubbing test. Everything has been very smooth and fast as expected. Now let's put them side by side and export this file. All right, here we go, exact same video project. I'm gonna hit save at the same time. There we go, and they're off. Now we will go ahead and test these. I wanna make note, this is a very rough test. Keep in mind that this is a completely clean install on the M1 Max and on the M1, I've been using it for a while. There's a ton of files on there. Storage is getting pretty full. So just kind of keep that in mind, this is very rough. I would imagine that even if these were both M1 Max devices, this one would finish faster, but I'll keep you updated. All right, so the M1 Max is flying. It's at 94% and moving over to the, oh wait, just kidding, it's done. Take a look at that, it finished at 2.09 p.m. I should have probably timed it, but anyways, the M1 is at 36% to give you an idea of how much faster the exact same 4K video rendered in that is crazy, and again, there weren't crazy edits or anything like that, and I'm not saying the M1 is a slow chip by any means. I love the M1 chip. I've been super impressed with it, but that is crazy how big of a difference that was in timing of exporting. I'll let this one go and make note of what time it actually finishes, and the M1 is finishing up at around 2.15 p.m., so over six minutes of difference 
between the two. Pretty, diff pretty different, but again, keep in mind, this isn't a clean belt. There's a lot of stuff on there, so factor that in with this rough comparison. And the last thing I wanted to cover for now is that display. First of all, what happens if you watch a video? This is a 4-3 aspect ratio video. I believe the display's aspect ratio is 1.54 to 1. This is a 4-3 video, so realistically it should be tall. And you'll see the height of the video gets stopped once you reach that notch. So it doesn't actually cut, the video doesn't actually cut into the notch. It cuts it off at this menu bar up towards the top. So you don't see the notch when you have the taller videos in full screen. Now let's go to maybe a 16.9 video. So here's a quick 16.9 video demo. And again, this one is more wide, so it will leave padding anyways from the menu because you'll see this black space there because it's in 16.9 aspect ratio. But don't worry, if you're watching a full screen video, you will not see the notch. Obviously, you're going to see it when you are on your home screen, though. So overall, that is everything I want to talk about for now with the new MacBook. I'll do one more test of the fingerprint scanner as we head out. Drop a comment. Let me know if you're picking up one of these new laptops, 14-inch, 16-inch. And opening it up brings us to our lock screen there. Setting our finger down unlocks it right away. So again, let me know what you think about the new display. I love the higher refresh rate. The notch is just okay, in my opinion. A lot more content coming soon, so be sure to click the subscribe button. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.